What's up guys and welcome back to Pop Beat Breakdowns. In today's video, I'm gonna be breaking down a Taylor Swift Wildest Dreams type beat that I made a while ago for my beat store. If you are a beginner to music production and want to know how to build a track similar to that song or even just in the Taylor Swift vibe for that era of her music, then this is the video for you. So smash that subscribe button right now if you are new to the channel because it's the best way to keep up to date with new videos like this when they drop. There's lots more Taylor Swift type beats in the future to be broken down if that's the sort of music you're going for. As as well as a multitude of other artists and other genres. So if that's music to your ears, then that is the reason why you should subscribe to this channel right now. With that mandatory out of the way, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into logic and let's break down this Taylor Swift Wildest Dreams type beat. Okay, so we're now in Logic and this is the project. This is a beat that I made a while ago. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down texture by texture, instrument by instrument, so you can see how I actually built the track up. I always find it is the most helpful way for you guys, especially if you're a beginner, to music production and composing music, how to actually build a track from the ground up because the thing I found very hard when I first started producing is where to start most of the time. So today we are starting from the drums. This is how I built it up. I built the whole track around the end. Sometimes when I make music productions, I like to build it up from the most compact point where there's the most things going on so I can get the best idea of how I how this track is going to sound when it's finished. And then I'll just then extract elements at the start and start putting in different places so it makes it easier to structure the song once you've got the main body sound of the production. So that's what we've done here. So when I listened to Taylor Swift Wildest Dreams, the first thing that I wanted to do was get the beat down because that's the real driving force of this song. It, it's very subtle in Wildest Dreams, but it makes it atmospheric. It's very almost got a cinematic quality to it. So I wanted to convey that across. So firstly, we start with today the drum kit, the SoCal kit in Logic. This is a preset that you can find. And as for EQing, you can see there's a lot going on here because there's certain qualities I want to bring out. We've got a very high uh, rise on the low end with a low uh, pass filter. And then we've also got a boost at 1600 hertz. This is to add a little bit of that bright snap from the snare drum. And then also I always love to do a raise or a high pass filter in the high end of the drums because it adds a bit of air and it adds a little bit more spatial quality to the drums. So this is the drums. As you can hear, I just slapped as well a little compressor on there just to tighten it up a little bit. And the ROM reverb by Native Instruments, you can use Space Designer to achieve the same effect. But basically we've got 31% uh, wet signal with a 4.2 second delay. So again, we're wanting to build the atmosphere. So that's the reason why I've done that. And I've laid it here with another kick as well. I've used Splice for this because I like to layer sounds to create originality and also closer map the exact sound I want. Instead of spending hours looking for that sound that you can't find, sometimes it's good to blend sounds together. So we blended this kick. As you can hear, it has a real punch in the low end. It's something that was missing from the preset kit in Logic. So don't ever feel like you have to overly EQ stuff to try and get, say, for example, in a kick if you want it to punch. Try layering a different kick which maybe has more punch to it and less high, and then you blend the two together and you get the best of both worlds. Moving on to the next instrument that I wanted to start building. So this here is a first use of Contact by Native Instruments. We've got here the Session Strings, or Session Strings, Two, and this is a rhythm animator. So this is really fun to use. So you just play in the root notes and it will play a violin pattern to whatever it is that you trigger uh, note wise. As you can hear, this is my first idea of how I wanted to build the track up. I listened to the production and all the textures in Wilder Stream Taylor Swift and the strings is something that's very prominent. And for that cinematic quality, I really wanted that mixture of staccato and legato strings in there. So this is the staccato side. So we're starting to get a feel for this driving on. You see there's no processing in any of this because I did all of the mixing in the actual software instrument. There's the same for what we got onto the next string section, which is just playing chords. But this is Omnisphere this time because I just wanted to play legato chords in. I went into Omnisphere, which has my favorite uh, software instrument for strings, the Hollywood Studio String section. It comes pre with a lot of reverbs and tape slammers and that, which I can take out if I want to really mix up the EQing of the strings how I want. But most of the time I leave it how it is because what's really cool about Omnisphere, it does blend sounds together. So you've got the atmosphere strings ambient blended with the atmosphere strings close A. 
and it creates this really beautiful cinematic strings, which we're just playing the chords here. And I just laid it with a couple more. How cool, how good does that sound? And that's just one's playing the root note a lot lower down, lower in the octaves, and then we're holding down the root note of the key as well. Another one. So you may have seen in previous videos that I have done a lot of the time, you can have sort of my rule of building a string section, the, the rule of four or the rule of five, and where you have the root note, you have the body, you have the melodic value, the counter melody and the development. This one, it was a little bit more just adding layers when I felt like it to create this whole massive string section. Really trying to mix up that staccato and legato because that's how you get a really dramatic sounding string section. So when you hear here, we've got another, I believe that is just all on me sphere in one contact. So this is, again, the Hollywood string section, but with some of them, they're holding on the root note. Others ones, I try to add a little bit more like melodic value to them, but just trying to keep it simple at the same time because there's a lot more yet to come from this production. So this is what we've got so far. So it, it makes this massive sound and that's really cool because again we want it to be cinematic so we want to have that quality to it. Which brings on to the next thing we've added which is the piano and we've just used the Steinway piano believe it or not. So this is a Logic preset. Just playing block chords. Trying to keep it simple, really trying to lay around the strings now. So sometimes what I like to do is then get rid of the kick because this piano is adding to the wall of sound for like from a chord point of view so the strings and the piano together so I was kind of muting the drums at this point and you can hear it doesn't stick out in the mix but it fills in a couple of gaps in the low to mid which completes this whole full sound so again that's the reason why at this point I was adding piano because piano and strings accompany each other so well I can't emphasize that enough which brings up to the next thing is when I actually then decided I was going to add some hi-hats in. These ones were just sampled in from Splice. Very similar to the hi-hats that we hear in Taylor Swift. Wider streams. So it's, the section is already coming along really well. We've got our first 10 tracks in and this is the sound we've got so far. At this point now, we just need to add all the colors that we need to, to create this wall of sound for this Wildest Dreams type beat, which again, emphasis on the cinematic quality. So when it gets to the second part, we need to really start thinking about the development a lot more because we don't want this to be too repetitive for obvious reasons. So then I added this in, which is just another snare. And check this out. Lots of reverb. Again, I sampled this from Splice, which is a really, really good external software, by the way, uh, which is £6 a month and it's worth it every penny. And I've just added the reverb in here. We've got a 4.8 second reverb, massive with a 50% decay because I want it to sound like it's in the room a little bit because we want that atmosphere. So I don't mind about getting that boxiness from a very overly wet signal from some drums. So that's fine. So it adds this extra snap. Again, we think it's cinematic, we want to build, we want to build this sort of like this tension, like the moods starting to rise, which is when I need to start to think like, okay, we really now start think about the sort of feel that we're getting from this. So I added pads at this point. So we've got the dark swell pad, which is retro synth. This is a logic preset. And you can also find this in the logic synth, the retro synth. Dark swell is a pad, obviously as you know, it's a pad, it's a pad uh, preset. So I layered these in. Because there is a little bit of a synthetic quality in Wildest Dreams and there's something really nice, warm, saturated feel that you get from the Dark Swell pad in the Retro Synth. So I feel like I had to include it. This is more to accompany the strings and the piano. Because again, this is going back to that sort of wall like of the emotion that is conveyed across. Strings are very good at conveying emotion, but pads can be as well. So as you can hear, it just blends so nicely in. Pads make a massive difference on tracks. You've really got to remember that. Pads, honestly, it could be the difference from a production that feels like it's missing something to something that feels complete and really conveys across that emotion that you want to try and bring across. 
which then after we've done this, you can hear we've pretty much got the whole of the track together how we want it. So at this point, I start adding crashes in. I'm not going to talk too much about the crashes sampled in from Splice, which is nice. And I also decided to reverse them as well to create a little bit of transition. Just like that. And then the last thing I added was the orchestral kit because again, I wanted to really fill in with this orchestral quality. So I just feel like there was missing some little percussive elements to make it a bit more interesting. And that's just a little block. I did put the reverb on again, 21% with a 4.8 second reverb. Big again, because I'm really big on atmosphere for this track. I want it to be really ambient because that cinematic quality that we come across. And that is basically the track altogether. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play you the track from the pre-chorus to the end and you can hear exactly the sound that I've gone for and we've arrived at using everything that we've talked about in this video. So yeah, enjoy. So there you have it, that is how to make a Taylor Swift Wildest Dreams type beat. Whether you're a beginner to music production or an intermediate or consider yourself to be at the advanced stage of music production, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, smash that subscribe button right now as it is the best way to support the channel and support future videos. And also to make sure that you never miss a pop beat breakdown video when it drops. So I'm gonna leave the video there for today, guys. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, keep making music and I will see you in the next video.